Now that we have learned the last differentiation rule, it's time to put all of these rules together. Now you've been pretty good at combining the rest of them so far, the four shortcut rules in with the product rule and the quotient rule, but how does it work when we have to combine two of the three larger rules, such as a chain rule with the product rule or a chain rule with the quotient rule? So let's go ahead and see our first example of this. Here I have 3x plus 1 to the 4th times 2x minus 1 to the 5th. And we first need to identify which of the larger rules that we need to use. So first we see that there is a multiplication, so obviously we're going to have to do a product rule. But also we see some inside pieces and we see some outside pieces. So we're going to have to do a chain rule, and in fact, since we have it twice, we're going to have to do two separate chain rules. What students get most confused on is where do I start? Do I start with a product rule or do I start with a chain rule? Or which process do I need to really start with? My explanation to try and get you to help to understand which rule to start out with is if you have one major inside piece and one outside piece, then most likely you're going to need to start with the chain rule. So if you have one inside piece and one outside piece, you need to do the chain rule first. Here, in this function, as we said before, we have two separate. I have an inside piece and an outside piece here, and I have an inside piece and I have an outside piece there. So I have two separate pieces, so what I really need to start with is what's happening in between those two pieces, so we need to start with our product rule. So let me just write out the product rule here, and then we're going to start taking the derivative in the next step, which in that step we'll need to utilize our chain rule. So my derivative then, starting with the product rule, is the original of the second, 2x minus 1 to the fifth, times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of the first is 3x plus 1 to the fourth, Prime. So I need to take the derivative of that piece. So that's the first half of my product rule, plus now the second half, which says the original of the first plus 3x plus 1 to the fourth times the derivative of the second. Well, my second is 2x minus 1 to the fifth. I'm going to put a prime on it to say that I need to take the derivative of it. So here is just the product rule written out. The original of the second times derivative of the first plus original of the first times derivative of the second. Now let, me go ahead. now let me go ahead and get rid of these primes here and actually take the derivative of those pieces. So copying down my 2x minus 1 to the fifth times the derivative of this here. I have an inside-outside piece, so I need to do the chain rule. I have something to the fourth power, so the derivative of that is 4 times my something to the third power where the something is this 3x plus 1. But then the chain rule says we also have to take the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 3x plus 1 gives me 3. Plus, moving on to the second half, 3x plus 1 to the fourth times the derivative of this here. I have an inside-outside piece, so I need to do the chain rule. The derivative of something to the fifth power is 5 times that something to the fourth power, where my inside times the derivative of the inside, which is just 2. And so we have done our official derivative. Now we need to worry about simplifying it. My major separator piece is this plus sign, so let me first condense each of these pieces as far as I can. I have constants, so 4 times 3 gives me 12, and then just copying down the rest of it. Again, I cannot simplify any of the rest of this piece here because they each have their individual exponent, which we know that we can't distribute something through. Plus, my second piece, again multiplying the constants, 5 times 2 gives me 10 times 3x plus 1 to the 4th times 2x minus 1 to the fourth. Now you might think that this is all you can do to simplify. Well, in fact, you can actually simplify a little bit farther, and you've actually done this before. You did this back in the very first 
section of this class where we were reviewing factoring, and we know that we can now factor this problem. Again, I have two separate pieces here. I need to figure out which each of these pieces have in common. Between my coefficients, 12 and 10, we have a common factor of 2. Then we have 2x minus 1 to the fifth and a 2x minus 1 to the fourth. So I can take out 2x minus 1, and I can take out the smallest amount that either term has. So I can take out four of them. Also, I have a 3x plus 1 in common. So to take out the smallest amount of those, I can take out 3x plus 1 to the third. And now we need to figure out what we have left over. So focusing on this first red underline here, dividing everything out. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. 2x minus 1 to the fifth, if I take out four of them, that leaves me with one of them. And 3x plus 1, I took out all three of them. Plus, now my second piece. I need to divide everything here by my common factor out there. 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. 3x plus 1 to the fourth, if I took out three of them, that leaves me with one, 3x plus 1. And 2x minus 1 to the fourth, if I take out all four of them, then I don't have any of those left. So now all I have to do is simplify what's inside my brackets. I do that by distributing my 6 and my 5. Keeping my common factor out here the same. Six times two gives me 12x minus six plus five times three, 15x plus five. And now all I need to do is combine like terms in my parentheses over there. So 12 plus 15 gives me 27x, Negative 6 plus 5 gives me a plus 1. And so this is the most simplified version of this derivative here, where I had to use both a product rule and a chain rule. And then in simplifying it, I had to factor out my common factor. In the next video, I'm going to do another example where we have to yet again combine two of our larger rules.